speaking sure. of live sports, someone who will get to see, if he so chooses, the inner squad game tonight is joining us now uh, from his summer camp. Blue Jays general manager Ross Atkins. Not not really the same old summer camp that we all grew up with, was it? <laughs> no, not the same. <laughs> I didn't have much summer camp in my life. No, but I, I back to the uh, back. I can just zoom you guys in. I will just go FaceTime for the next couple of hours. <laughs> there I'll you go. How that production works. There I'm you in. go. Ross, you're a golfer. Tigers, Tigers going to play the Memorial next weekend. I, if, if he's in the hunt on Saturday and Sunday, how much are you paying attention to that? Yeah, I, you know what I do? I appreciate all live sports and I will, I will certainly tune in when I can. I, I wouldn't call myself a golfer. I play once a year. I, okay. I played a little bit in the past, but um, I do really appreciate and respect the sport. And I was interested to hear you guys talking about that. Also, you know, fascinating to think about athletes' decisions to play or to not to play. And that, that adrenaline that athletes live upon and need, I, I talk so often with athletes and former athletes, it's just about how they manage that, especially, you know, former athletes dealing with not being able to compete, not being able to get that adrenaline level to those levels that they're accustomed to. And yeah. that's why, you know, in my opinion, Tiger's going to, you know, he wants to be there. Without a doubt. It, like me saying, why don't you sit down for the rest of the year is very easy for me to say. And for him, you know, he is just chomp like as the competitor that, and, and maybe one of the greatest competitors of our lifetime, like as the competitor yeah. he is, he's just chomping at the bit to get back out there. There's, there's no doubt. H- how has the overall outlook on your chances to compete in 22 changed with the way this breaks down and the way we enter major league baseball's return to play? Yeah, it's been, it's been interesting really. Like I, I'm so encouraged by our, players and I speak for the industry there just to, to see the behavior of players and how much respect they have for the, the protocols, for the process, for the virus, for uh, all of the circumstance, really, uh, that will be why we are successful. It, you know, testing is a key part of it. I think just as important is the players complete buy-in to the protocols. They're, uh, you know, placing, the appropriate level of seriousness on, on this situation and circumstance. And that's what we've seen across the game. Uh, certainly have seen it for the Toronto Blue Jays. We are extremely encouraged by our, our players' reaction, the immediate turnaround of uh, testing results, and uh, you know, really what we've seen from a mindset, attitude, and outcome thus far. And, and in speaking of uh, you know, it's, it's just so interesting. I was, I was thinking about, as you guys were talking and talking about golf, someone said to me a long time ago about when you're playing with a competitor and it was on the golf course that someone said this to me, you know, very quickly about yourself and the competitor and how they deal with a challenge. Do they walk up to an uphill sand, hill, sand shot at 90 yards and say, I can't wait to hit this. Or do they talk about their misfortune or luck? And to see our, to see our team right now talking about our circumstances as an opportunity, because we will have now that we are having camp here, the restrictions that are placed upon us are uh, more, more strict than they are for other teams. And our, and our players are talking about that as an opportunity to make us more competitive. And it's, it's that mindset that is, uh, very, very telling for organizations and teams that do exceptional things. And, uh, it's been really encouraging for us and a lot uh, a lot of fun, really, to be around. So, Russ, let's talk about a couple of those guys. Um, with the caveat that the virus uh, hopefully doesn't affect anybody, but especially them, a lot of Blue Jay fans know Bichette, they know Biggio, you know, they know Ryu, uh, they know Guerrero and the rest. Who are a couple of dudes under the radar that maybe aren't household names that you think could emerge this season in a shortened 60 game schedule that could make an impact, um, in a sprint and not a marathon. Yeah. I think, you know, that some of the pitchers are, we're, we're really excited about our pitching depth and a lot of it is, uh, you know, I, to say unproven uh, is unproven at the major league level, the really good triple a double a track records and a lot of reasons to believe they will be successful in the major leagues and really dependent upon just opportunity and health durability is such a, a huge component for pitching. Um, so that that's what first and fourth comes force first and foremost comes to mind. Excuse me. Got it. Uh, but you know, the, the interesting thing, 
the interesting thing is, you know, we, we don't talk about Lourdes Gurriel nearly as much as we talk about the names that you just mentioned. I know he's not who you were pointing me to with your question, but I just want to make sure, sure that we do bring him up just because of just what a exceptional talent he is. And we feel like he's really on an upswing and he, he has had some soft tissue injuries. And then last year at the end of the season, just circumstance and bad luck. Uh, but man, he's a, he's an he's probably in the best shape of any of our players right now, and wanted to make sure that I called attention to it. He is, uh, you know, really a remarkable talent. It's fascinating to watch how he he took this this time down to to, to really maximize it. Uh, but I I really think it's going to be the pitching that shines for us as we think about the unheralded names and you know one of them Nate Pearson and. Uh, you know, that one is not unheralded by any means, but has not yet pitched in the major leagues. The, the, interesting, the interesting thing about our situation right now is that we don't have other development opportunities for guys. So we're going to have to really think about how we maximize this environment while we're trying to win every night. And, you know, not, you know first and foremost, it's, it's, it's win. Uh, but then secondarily, thinking about where the development opportunities are and what is the, the, the opportunity cost of, of having someone maybe potentially move to a bullpen role, using the piggyback as a, a way to tap into our pitching depth when uh, the rosters are expanded. But it, it, it really is going to come down to uh, that, that body and less, uh, you know, calling out one or two names. Ross Atkins joining us here on Tim and Sid with Arash Madani. A couple months ago, uh, we were joking with Mark Shapiro about begging for the day where we would be able to ask the Nate Pearson questions once again. Well, here we are. We're at that day. And he obviously had a pretty damn good spring. But how will you know, and you're getting this question a ton and we understand it, but how do you know if he's ready to break summer camp with this team? Yeah, I mean, usually it's really hard in a... uh, a spring setting to really know for sure. And, and that's why we talk so much about the value of him pitching in AAA for some time and getting an extended look at that level and maximizing every opportunity there. So, and, and then you, you couple that with, we're going to have uh, several inter squad games. We will play exhibition games. It's going to be difficult to know for sure. And then you're always thinking about someone making their debut on opening day and the added pressure of that. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's never wrap well and not never, but coming out of spring training for a player making their debut, it's never wrapped with a bow on top where oftentimes it really is, you know, where the, you're just getting out of the way and letting someone join your team because it is wrapped and has a bow on top and the player has made the decision for you. Uh, and then, and as you guys know, you not just in this sport, but across every sport, it's a very different environment when the stats and the score and the wins and losses don't matter. Uh, not, not don't matter altogether, but don't end up being a part of history. So, um, you know, we'll see, we're, we're so excited to, to have this group here, you know, that not just Nate Pearson, but a lot of the pitching depth that we do that are are learning from Rue and Shoemaker and Chase Anderson and Tanner Rourke every day and going to continue to grow and get better. And they've, they've really, it, our pitching has really stood out and how they've just taken advantage of this time down. And it's a little bit easier to do as a pitcher because, you know, you, you can get some, a lot of productive work done with a mound and a plate and a catcher. With Ryu Ross, I mean, nobody was, more of a ready-made gift wrapped in a bow ready to rock than him uh, mm-hmm. when you guys landed him. Uh, he knows his routine. He knows how he needs to get ready for a season. He's on his own track. He does his own thing. And then a pandemic hits and everything gets turned upside down. What has he been doing for the last four months to have himself ready? He's been awesome. Man, I, I, I can't say enough about, you know, if you think about someone living not in an altogether new country, but a a certainly country that's not his home and then moves to a new city for spring training that he's never been to, uh, joins a completely new organization, a new team, uh, doesn't command the English language to have to communicate uh, not entirely through a a translator, but oftentimes through that to it. It's no wonder he's been so successful. He he's as consistent as they come. He is very steady, easygoing, he makes others feel very comfortable around him. 
and he loves to compete and he loves to work. So those, those are the types of things that not everyone's born with. And, you know, fortunately he has some incredible attributes and he's grown, he's matured over his career through dealing with the injuries and having to have made some adjustments and all, all through that, all the things I just described was bringing his wife into a new environment to deliver a new baby girl and, and another country and a new state and a, and a foreign city. So, um, you know, he is, he's in great shape. He looks fantastic. He's going to be stretched out and ready to go for opening day. If we don't have any, uh, any significant setbacks and, uh, man, are we glad to have him? He's, he's a joy to be around. How do you manage Ross? You talk about opening day and arms being stretched out. How do you now manage a pitching staff when guys have not been, are not getting the full spring training, so to speak? How, how does the workload now get, get figured out, if you will? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's uh, the workload is, is, is one aspect of it that you want to try to make sure you're, you're keeping workload on, um, you know, looking for opportunities to do that while uh, we're also managing the wear and tear. So it, it, there's always a balance with that. Um, and, and it's also very difficult to ask someone in non-competitive environments to go out and throw five and six innings of simulated games and for mm-hmm. that to really be that productive on different adrenaline levels. So, um, you know, for every player, and I, it, I know this is not the most fun answer, but it really has been different for every single player based on their circumstances, based on the resources they had, and then based on what, what, made, what motivated them and helped them stay in the right mindset and then opportunities they had just to get better. So over the course of the next you know, two weeks, really, we're just going to, we're going to double down on all the things that we've been doing and take those that really kept workloads down a bit and, and build them up so that they're in a, a comfortable position to add depth. The one thing that we need to be cognizant of and, and making sure we're covered for is the potential of having someone test positive and how that impacts our starting rotation and making sure that safety is at the forefront. So we'll have you know, a, a lot of our guys built up and stretched out and we'll be open-minded about how we tap into the 40 man roster to build that 30 man. And, uh, you know, I, again, it, it won't be too untraditional or it, it will be relatively traditional as they build up as it relates to innings over the next two weeks. You know, they'll be adding an inning uh, to an inning and a half based on pitch count over, over each outing. Ross Atkins here on Tim and Sid with the Rash Madani. Ross, you're talking about strategizing. And it, to me, as I hear you speak of it, I'm thinking, damn, there's got to be like 15 different, you know, um, 15. It might be infinite uh, number of possibilities that you're going through. How much does knowing where you'll play your home games and then the strategies that you'll have to prepare for whatever that means in the future as well? Like, do you know when you're going to know? if you'll play your home games in Toronto? Um, you know, I, so the first question and how much, how that plays into strategy is we're first and foremost, as it relates to pitching, thinking about depth. So that will be consistent wherever we're pitching and wherever we're playing as we create matchups, you know, the ballpark comes into play for sure. And right. that will, that's relatively easy to adjust, um, you know, at the time to build your roster. And by the time we make decisions on our roster, we will definitely know. Uh, we're, we're certainly not going to put uh, firm deadlines on it ourselves because we would very much like to be in Toronto and want to keep every avenue open to make that happen as we contingency plan in other places. So the, the question is not just ballparks, but like, do you have to figure out, you know, mentally, you got a lot of young kids and, you know, they're preparing for a season in Toronto and if that changes and all of those things that go into it, like there is going to be uh, a mental aspect to this season that I don't think any of us have ever seen in our lifetime. Is that something you guys have to build into your strategy for the year? All of the curveballs from a positive test to having to move to Florida or even Buffalo if circumstances dictate. Right. Yeah, I think so, Tim. I think, you know, the, the, the best thing we can possibly do is, is continue to keep our players up to date on where things stand and how we're thinking about them, how we're working through alternatives, 
and 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 try to answer as many questions as we can and right. and learn from them on things that are making them anxious, increasing or decreasing anxiety, uh, things that are much more important to them. It, you know, one of the one of the most encouraging things I think I can share with you is the 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 biggest point of anxiety for our team has been one first and foremost just a collective desire to be in Toronto for obvious reasons. There's so many reasons we could list them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, that, but beyond that, the challenges of, you know, whether being here or just challenges as they come here for training have been the so positive, you know, the way that they've embraced challenge, they just look at them as opportunities. I was, as I was speaking of before, because you think about what we're asking of them, it's exceptional across the game. It's, it's even more exceptional here. So, you know, guys, they want to know where their families are going to be and what their access is going to be to them. And that is a, a very real, real challenge, but they're controlling what they can control and, and talking about things from a, 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 in a really, from with a really positive lens. So, um, but it is like you, Tim, your, your question is, is spot on. And, you know, I, I talk to you know, as many players as I can every day. And, you know, some of it is just, you know, talking about the challenges that we have that day that we're thinking of as opportunities, what's in front of us. And uh, some of it is very logistical in nature. Um, you know, we, we've had logistical uh, <laughs> just equations put in front of us that I never thought I would be dealing with, right. obviously. Um, but it, it has been very, very uh, encouraging, I would say, to see how our group has come together, how the team has come together. Because I think this, this, these types of situations, I'm stating somewhat the obvious, will, will really, really help you understand what, what your organization's made of, what individuals within it and individuals in, within the team are made of. And not just the, the team that's going onto the field every day, but our baseball operations team, I, I cannot say enough about our coaching staff, about our baseball operations team, the around the clock work that on the business side that Mark Shapiro, Marty Starkman and Anouk have, have spearheaded for us on the business side of things. And then Joe Sheehan and Mike Morove and our baseball operations team and coaching staff have just relentlessly tried to answer questions for our players in a productive and strategic way. And it's, it's been very encouraging just to see how productive that time has been with the group. Ross Adkins joins us on Tim and Sid. Ross, you announced the, uh, the signing of Austin Martin. And, and obviously, you know, it, there's no minor league season this year. Charlie mentioned that he's going to be added to the 60 man. What are the steps in the development process with Martin for this season once he gets with the team and, and what do you hope he's able to accomplish in the coming weeks and months to, to see tangible growth from, from his standpoint? Yeah, I think first and foremost is to help him come into the organization as smoothly as possible. So uh, I think all too often you can be expedient in the world of, you know, what is ideal from afar and what you think is going to be ideal for the organization without including the player in the process. <laughs> and that's the first thing that we intend to do is learn from the player about uh, the things that we potentially weren't able to because we weren't with them on a daily basis and weren't, uh, you know, developing with them. And I, I, you know, something else somebody said to me a long time ago is you can't develop a player. Uh, the player can develop themselves. You can provide the resources for them and, and help them, uh, you know, realize their potential ultimately by putting, helping putting the right resources in front of them and deciding what to prioritize at the right time. And that is what we'll spend the majority of our time with Austin on to, to start the relationship is learning more about him and learning more about him. I think offensively is going to be pretty quick. He's about as polished as they come. And then thinking about defensively, where what excites him and you know where where he really envisions himself playing and how we could help him develop there given the team that we have here in toronto the uh, the prospects that we have in our system and factoring that in but his versatility his athleticism coupled with that offensive profile is 
I mean, it, it, it's really exciting. It's a, a, a rare opportunity, and we're glad we had it to acquire him. Uh, Ross, it's just nice to talk baseball. I feel like we could do it for an hour, <laughs> yeah. but we'll wait, we'll wait for the Zoom call so that Rash and I can watch the inner squad game with you. No, Tim and <laughs> Tim and Arash, thank you guys so much for having me on. It's, it feels good to me to, to be talking to you guys and talking about these guys. It you know, really does. It gets my, my adrenaline going. So thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. Be well, okay? Okay, likewise. There is uh, Ross Atkins. We'll take the break. We'll come back, break that down with your reactions to what he said. Get to 